Hi, in this video we're going to demonstrate how to install some bollards. As you can see I've got two 48 kilogram gas bottles. I've put some red cones where the bollards are going to be installed. The reason for the bollards is that if a car does not see the gas cage there it will hit the bollards and not hit the gas bottles so we are stopping a possible fire. Right, in order to install the bollards, we need to dig some holes. Right, so in this case, the hole is 50 centimeters or half a meter deep. And we've just made them 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters. Right, so here's the pipe we're going to use. This has an outer diameter of 114 millimeters. And the wall thickness is 3.94 millimeters. Right, now obviously in your installation, you'll have to specify the correct pipe thickness. Now in this case we are using this 114 and here is the cap that's going to go on top and we'll need to weld it here so these are the caps and all we need to do now is measure the pipe and cut it at the correct places. Right in our installation we want the bollard to come out of the ground by one meter. So that means that I have to add the amount that's going in the ground. So in this case we are going to cut the pipe at 1.45 meters. So this is 1.45 and as I said what's going to be in the ground is going to be just less than 50 centimeters. In this case it's going to be 45 centimeters. So that's 45 centimeters and then this is the portion which will be protruding out of the ground. Right so this is the portion that is going to be outside. It's uh, just over a meter with the cap on. And there's the remainder in the hole. Right, we need three bollards, so we are going to do this three times all together, and then we'll put the concrete. Right, you can line up the one pole and then just mark off, so you get the poles the same size, or you could have just done your measurements three times. Right, so I've got an old-fashioned welder. You probably got a more modern one, which is easier to weld with. And what we need to do is just weld these end caps onto the pole. It's best to weld these on now because you can put your clamp, your earth lead, on the pole right now. I'm using a size 3.2 millimeter electrode and I've set my welder to 140 amps. This is a 220 volt welder. Right, so I just hold the end cap over here. I just feel around so that it's not protruding anywhere. And now all I'm going to do is just tack it. I'm going to tack it in a few places just to hold it in place. I've just welded a few spot welds around and now I can join those spot welds. I prefer to weld a bit and then turn it to the opposite side because the heat does tend to deform the steel a bit. Now once it's been welded, I just inspect the weld, give it a bit of a tap, then I'm going to go with the grinder and just smooth this out. If you've got a big grinder and you've got a grinding disc, you can actually grind this more smoothly with a bigger disc. Unfortunately, we've run out of grinding discs, so we use the small grinder. Right, so to make this stronger, what we do is we weld some pieces of steel on, uh, like that or like that, or even two, so that it anchors the pole and uh, that will make it stronger in the cement. Right, so I'm just going to weld these onto the poles and then we'll do the priming. Right, so we've put an anchor on each one of these poles. You can put two if you want, and now it's time to clean it with some thinners and prime it. Right, so we're going to make the concrete mix. There's the stone, the sand, and the cement. Right, we're following the high strength mix, so we're going one to two to two. So it's one part cement to two part river sand to two part stone. Right, so the mix is ready. Poles are in place. Right, so the pole is going to extrude one meter out from the ground, which means the three poles are going to be at slightly different heights. Just have a little bit of sand, which we're going to put just around the pole, right at the bottom. Right, now I drop it in to get it quite deep in that sand. We 
we have to leave space for the paving brick and still a little bit of river sand. Right, so there are the three bollards and the driveway slopes downwards. Because they are all at different heights, it might look funny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two the same height and then the one on the far left, that will be lower. Now, that means I'm going to just lift the middle one just slightly. So we just wipe any excess concrete off. We don't want it to make a rough finish when we paint it. Right, so that is exactly one meter out of the ground. Right, I need to measure this way and then I need to measure like that. If you use a long spirit level, you'll get it even more accurate because it will amplify the difference. Just keep in mind that when you are doing your alignment, this might be a little bit wider than the pole and that might make your spirit level just move a little bit outwards. Otherwise, just use the pole level. Right, because these are not load bearing, you can start paving it within two days, but we normally leave poles for four to five days before we start working around them. All right, so now what we're going to do is put the paving bricks back, and on this one, we're just going to cement it because we have a cement floor surrounding this pole. Right, we use a QD enamel to do the painting and the color I've chosen is a sunset yellow which is easily observable and there you can see the finished product there are the three bollards and you can also see some of the paving thanks for watching and cheers